Hey everyone, this is Alex here again. Um, sorry I haven't been around for a while. Uh, science is a bit of a demanding mistress uh, and haven't had as much time for fun projects for a while, but anyways, here we are. Uh, so I've been sort of going along my whole liquid uh, dispensing theme for a while and uh, one thing that you know could be made more convenient in labs is um, dispensing buffers, dispensing uh, aliquots of things, uh, regular amounts um, without the hassle of you know taking out your pipette or uh, let's say getting a graduated cylinder and you know looking at the meniscus and all that kind of stuff right so one way that you can solve this for example if you need to dispense uh, say 20 ml of buffer to make a liter of working solution uh, is uh, something like this guy right here uh, so I'm not sure what the brand name of this specific one is I think it's called like a dispense set or something like that but what it is essentially is a glass cylinder in here like a syringe uh, and some check valves in here that when you ra when you raise this uh, specific part you see that it actually sucks up liquid here uh, there's a stop there that tells it how far to go up and then when you press down again <laughs> and then when you press down again you get a specified amount of liquid out uh, from the nozzle uh, which is all well and good these are quite nice uh, however who's any uh, anybody who's shopped for these knows that this one um, this sort of basic model goes for about say I don't know 300 bucks new just just for this 300 bucks uh, maybe more um, a fancier model sort of like this guy this guy uh, again 450 uh, or more dollars uh, easily uh, so if you want one of these for every bottle of butter <laughs> butter buffer uh, then um, unless you're your lab and your PI is particularly spendy, I would, uh, I wouldn't bet on it. So, my solution to this problem, uh, if it is a problem at all, is what I'm dubbing the dispensation station. Uh, and here you have it. So essentially all it is, is a, uh, I would say medium-sized peristaltic pump and it's uh, controlled by a stepper motor so you get accurate uh, sort of control versus what you could get with a um, you know just a regular DC motor this provides sort of uh, an amount of steps that you can tell it to move so you can dispense accurate volumes uh, and that is actually controlled by And that is actually controlled by this rat's nest right here, which is an Arduino uh, clone. Uh, unfortunately, I can't afford the $30 a pop uh, at the rate that I break these. But uh, so this is an Arduino clone board. Uh, and on top of this is a easy driver, stepper motor driver and I've uh, put a pretty big heat sink on this uh, bad boy right here. Uh, as well, uh, I'll be putting up, uh, I suppose, a plan and a breakdown of all these parts on the blog. It looks a little messy right now, but it's really not that complicated. There's really only a few components. There's the, the brains, uh, which is the Arduino board. Uh, you have the stepper motor driver, which actually moves the motor. Uh, and then there's a switch and a potentiometer on the front, which I'll show you right now. Uh, here's the potentiometer, 
uh, which actually controls how much volume the, the pump actually dispenses per press. And then I've attached a little button that I've had laying around for a while. It had the wire on it and everything, so it was just convenient. But you could use any sort of button that you'd like. Uh, and basically that's it. So you have a controller, you have a stepper motor driver, you have a button, and you have a poten potentiometer right here. That's that thing on the back. And as you can see, I mounted it on some 2040 aluminum, uh, and I thought that was a good idea, but the actual motor is pretty heavy, uh, so I needed to put a counterweight on this platform down here to actually balance it, so the mount could actually use quite a bit of work. Um, but besides that, it actually works uh, works exactly how I want it to. So let me just set that up and uh, we'll give it a go. Um, and this little daisy chain of, uh, of zip ties is literally just to support the arm, the I guess the output of the uh, peristaltic pump. As well, what I've noticed is that the pump performs a lot better and there's a lot less air in the system if you put two uh, one-way check valves on the input and one on the output of, uh, of the pump, okay? And just as an aside, the interesting part about these types of pumps, peristaltic pumps, is that essentially the liquid that goes through the pump never actually touches any part of the motor itself. It's all self-contained within the tube that goes through the motor. Uh, and therefore, if you want to keep your liquid sterile, then this is the pump for you, basically. So that's that's why I chose this pump. Um, but yeah, let's let's see it works. So I have this set now for about 10 ml, and we'll just dispense 10 ml right now. I'm just gonna cut this off so you you, you can see everything a little bit better. There you go. So I'm just going to press this button right here. And as you can see, it's actually pretty fast. Um, and that's, I mean, that's essentially all it is. Uh, the cost for parts is very, very low. Uh, the pump was the most expensive part at about, I don't know, 60 bucks. The controller and the easy driver, I would say maybe 15 bucks. The switches and the potent potentiometer, everything I had lying around. So, you know, for 80, 90 bucks, you can actually have a pretty good uh, liquid dispensing sort of solution. And you can upgrade it in a couple of different ways. For example, you could have multiple buttons here that have, um, that can dispense set volumes rather than having to adjust it every time. Uh, that's actually probably what I'm going to do and convert this to because um, every time that you adjust this knob, uh, you have to go and check on the scale how much this thing is dispensing. But this, this machine, is actually incredibly accurate at dispensing, uh, with only one caveat. So as long as you're dispensing more than, let's say, 5 or 10 ml at a time, uh, you can get, I would say, within half a percent uh, accuracy um, so let's say if you were wanted to dispense 10 ml, uh, you would get you know plus minus uh, half a percent uh, of that uh, each each time. So here's some um, 10 ml readings that I took. Uh, so I was just weighing water on a scale and tearing it in between each time, uh, and that's what you can expect for you know 10 ml. Uh, and when you average it out and get the standard error, yeah, uh, you get about half a percent. Um, and of course, the higher that you go, uh, so for example, if this was, if you were dispensing 50 ml every time, uh, the error across the whole system would be averaged out over a larger volume and your error would drop even more. 
uh, because the stepper motor is actually pretty precise. Um, the error comes in when you have bubbles coming in through here. So when you use this kind of a system, you have to make sure that you purge all the air from the line before you start using it properly. And yeah, so I tend to use this primarily for buffers that we use a lot of. So for electrophoresis and westerns and stuff like that. Uh, you could even have, you know, a row of these and a row of bottles beneath it for sort of a full, you know, dispensation station. Um, and this design, it's uh, pretty reminiscent uh, of uh, bartending robots. So uh, as long as nothing in here touched uh, uh, stuff in a lab, you could use it to dispense, you know, alcohol or food or whatever. Yeah, uh, hopefully you guys uh, decide to build your own. It's a good weekend project. It's not too hard uh, to build. Um, I'll be putting up any files like for the 3D printed parts on the blog as well as, you know, some close-up pictures. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little quick video, uh, hopefully more brief than some of my other ones. Uh, and uh, have a good day.